Hey y'all, Chef Irick Sky here, and within this video, I'm going to show y'all how to cook a uh, cheesesteak sandwich. Now, this is my preparation. Uh, you can see how I sliced my sirloin. Now, a lot of people use ribeye, which is perfectly fine, but today's market, I find sirloin to, I mean, I find ribeye to be too expensive. Sirloin's really good. Slice it thin like this. The next thing you're going to need are cheesesteak type buns. You can find these at most any grocery store. And then a cheese. A lot of people use... It's clean. <laughs> or is it? Um, yeah, so a lot of people use provolone. But I use a uh, habanero pepper jack shredded cheese. So again, personal preference. Yeah, that, that does look clean. I'm just cooking this for myself. So <laughs> I'm going to... I would never do that for for a uh, guest and then you're going to need the peppers you can chop up your own bell peppers and onions or you can just buy it in a bag at the frozen section so i'm just going to do the easy way today so let's go ahead and move my camera and get started and by the way you can expand this video's description and then click the link there to find the blackstone all the accessories like I use. The first thing I'm going to do is put put a little bit of oil here. I'm using canola oil. You may use a different type of oil. You may use butter. You do what you want to do. Put my vegetables on there. Now you are going to need one of these in a minute, and I'll show you why. So I'm going to go ahead and prep it, save it over here. I am cooking at high temp. I'm cooking at uh, 400 Fahrenheit. You can season these if you want to, but uh, you know I would I would probably use like a Worcestershire type sauce. Just kind of cook them up here for a little bit. And since these are frozen, you know, when you're doing, when you're dealing with, uh, if you're dealing with fresh onions and bell peppers, you could probably put those and your meat on it about the same time. But I want to cook these a little bit before I introduce the, uh, the steak, the sirloin steak in my case. But yeah, this, again, this is at 400. I've got it at top temp. What I am going to do over here, though, is reduce this. Actually, I'm just going to turn it off because I'm going to kind of use that as a as a warming area. Turn both my right burners off, so I'm just cooking on these two. It's amazing how quickly this this thing will cook. And again, as you know, these vegetables are frozen. And, you know, if you want to add salt, pepper, garlic, whatever to it, you could. You do whatever makes you happy. I may actually add a little bit of... Well, I added uh, salt, pepper, and garlic to my, to my steak. So, you know, again, do what you want to do. You may not... Sometimes it's better to not use a lot of seasoning. Because the beauty of this, the way this cooks, the way all these flavors blend together probably not even going to need salt, pepper, and garlic. You know, if, you use a, if you're used to using traditional grills, you've probably found that you season your meats and your vegetables a lot more, and that's because a lot of those, uh, a lot of those 
flavors and juices drip through the grill grates. Well, when you're cooking on a blackstone, there's no grill grates. This, this is gonna retain its flavor, so everything's gonna blend. We're gonna toss our, uh, our steak in with this here. And actually, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do something a little bit different. I'm gonna slide these off the side. Over here, it's kind of my, you know, like I said, I turned the right two burners off. So I'm just gonna put it under that dome and just let it kind of, kind of do its thing while I cook the steak a little bit. Again, as I mentioned, you can see I've got salt, pepper, garlic on there, and this is thinly sliced. Let's just go ahead and plop her down here. The steak cooking up. And I don't want to waste any salt, pepper, or garlic. I'm going to put it all on there. Now, I am going to get a little bit of Worcestershire to drizzle on. So got some Worcestershire, you know, completely optional, but a lot of people like that Worcestershire taste on beef. I really like it. So as you can see, I went a little bit crazy with that. I'm going to get a uh, YouTube short video right now for my, for my YouTube channel before I flip that. Hey, y'all, Irix guy here. This is a production in progress, man. I am cooking cheese steaks on my blackstone subscribe ring that bell and check out all of my blackstone videos y'all have a good day let's get a close-up here mmm that meat those vegetables mmm and okay so the degree of doneness you know personal preference See, we're gonna, you can see why we chop this so thinly because what this enables you to do is cook it more quickly, but as it starts to get more done, what we can do is kind of cut it up and create those, those uh, you know, those types of, those, <laughs> you know, when you eat a cheese steak and it's got that certain size of kind of meat, really small pieces, we're gonna kind of, chop this up and do that oh man this, this smells so good mmm man and, and everything I use again you can you can expand this video's description and click the link there because I've got it all linked there I don't have much Worcestershire left in this bottle man I may just go crazy go crazy with the Worcestershire now something you can do if you choose to do so you can use one of these presses Look at that, it's super heavy. And that'll accelerate your cooking. Cause man, I'm hungry. I ate at like seven o'clock this morning, but I just, I got, I just started doing some stuff, man. Some, uh, I upgraded my Linux server and uh, time went by. So I, I'm eating late, so I want to kind of accelerate it. So again, this is a great way to accelerate the cooking of the meat. Again, you can find this tool and everything linked within this video's description. I'm going for a more well done steak for this, uh, just because I, just how I like it. I'll let that sit there for a minute, and then what we're gonna and these are great for bacon too. We're, uh, check out my how to cook bacon on Blackstone video, by the way. So we're gonna get this just a little bit more done, not too done, because we want to take advantage of those juices. See all those juices. We want to blend all these flavors together with the uh, with the vegetables. And I say we could probably start to start to cut this here. Yeah, so you can you just start to cut the meat if you want to cut it into smaller pieces. And that's going to be one of our objectives because we do want to. You typically don't want for a traditional cheese steak. You don't want the big chunks. You want it more kind of cut up. This is such tender meat. 
again, a lot of people use ribeye, but I just go to a really good butcher and get uh, and get sirloin because it's less expensive. Everything's astronomical now. These things, as you can see, they kind of double as a as a cutting tool, so that's super handy. You don't have to chop it up, but if you want to, you do whatever you want to do. I, I don't care. This is how I do it. I'll have some bigger pieces in there. Why not? Now, see what we can do is get we can take this dome off and we can blend all of these wonderful flavors. Had the vegetables under the dome as I mentioned because they were uh, they were uh, they were frozen. I, I didn't go with fresh vegetables. I went with frozen for just laziness. And uh, so they needed a little bit. They needed a little bit longer. Now they're perfect. Now, if you, again, if you like Worcestershire, man, you can get some more on there. Let's really give it that. How much I have left? No, I don't want to waste all that. That's an excessive amount already. So see now, that's just giving it that. Hmm. That wonderful flavor. The juices from the meat are blending with the vegetables. So that when you bite into this cheese steak, you're gonna get just a, a full uh, full effect. Oh man. That onion looked like a little looked like an outer peel of an onion. I don't want that. Again, it would be optimal to chop your own bell peppers and onions, but dude, there's nothing wrong with getting a frozen bag of onions and bell peppers. That way, pretty much on the fly, you can say, hey man, I want cheese steaks. Just pull them out of the freezer, cook them like I'm doing here. And just go about, go about your fine dining experience. I consider this fine dining because, man, I... You know, there's good restaurants, but man, today, go to a restaurant's astronomical. So why not just do your stuff in your backyard like this, man? I mean, it's so much better. Still expensive, because everything's super expensive nowadays, but it's, uh, man, this looks good. And then something you can do too. You see now this is this is pretty much cooked. You could put you could put the little dome over that and just kind of let the aromatics kick in because you got you know you got your uh, you got your onions, your bell peppers, your steak, all of those flavors now in the air. They're just kind of blending together. I mean, don't think of a flat top as you know like this blackstone. Don't think of a flat top as something that doesn't have a cover. It doesn't have a cover. Well, I've got a hard cover for it to protect it when I store it, but you don't cook covered, but you can utilize this tool, and it's just a way to uh, introduce aromatics and keep things warm as well. Like if you're doing, check out my How to Cook Breakfast on the Blackstone video. You'll see I use this for that also. And we're actually about to use it when we do these buns. So these buns here, Let's see, oh, let's check the temperature. So see, even with that off, this is over 200 degrees over here with these two right burners off. So what I'm gonna do is throw these down. You could put butter on these if you wanted to, completely optional. I'm not going to, uh, but these are the, uh, Keep the top part and the bottom part, see? Um, but these are the, the buns that that I'm toasting. You could add butter, you could add garlic powder, you could add garlic salt, you could add sea salt and freshly ground garlic to really take it to the next level. That's something with cheesesteak you do 
typically want a good bit of garlic. So, you know, depending upon your preference, you, you may not, you may not want any, but in my opinion, garlic's what really gets a, gets a cheesesteak going, man. But like I said, I put a significant amount of garlic, sea salt, and pepper on the, uh, on the meat when I was marinating it. And then I've, you know, I put a significant amount of Worcestershire on there, as you saw. See, this over here is really cool. Probably, actually, I probably need to move these to the hot part for just a second. And then I'll move them over there to kind of slowly do. Because, again, keep in mind, even though I turn these right two burners off, this over here is still somewhat warm. But to toast, to toast, I'm going to put it on the hot part for just a little bit. I want to get that good, you know, it's all about the, the presentation, the texture, and the the way the flavors blend and I mean there's so many things here man see these don't want to toast them too much oh yeah see that look at that we got this right here that one's a little toasty just keep in mind when I'm melting the cheese on top they're also going to be toasting then too so you don't want to toast them too much now Okay, good. See that that's that's what I want. Let's see, you know what I managed to do? I managed to confuse these. Okay, so these are the top pieces. Again, it's all about presentation. Well it's not all about presentation, it's about flavor too. Okay, so those are the top top parts. These are the bottom parts. So see, now what we can do, let's take this off. Oh man, this is wonderful. And so now we can take this. I'm gonna eat two, my wife's probably only gonna eat one which is fine. That means more food for me. And these are messy. I mean, don't don't make a cheesesteak and try to go eat it in the car somewhere. That's stupid. I may make this work. Yeah, I did. A lot of people like provolone. Again, I used a blend of habanero and uh, jalapeno cheese. Shredded cheese works. Typically, you can find shredded cheese cheaper at your grocery store than you can sliced cheese, so I go for shredded for that reason. It's probably more convenient to use a slice, you know, slices of cheese for this though. And see now what you can do. Put all these here. And you can use your dome to accelerate the mail. And you notice I don't have these over the hot heat because I don't want to burn my buns. These two burners are on, these two are still off. Oh man, oh, <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah, I got that, uh, that seasoning on the steak is perfect. And I tell you, I used the right amount of Worcestershire See, when I think of a cheesesteak, I think of more Worcestershire flavor than garlic. I love garlic. But for me, if you go with too much garlic, you can drown out the flavor of the meat. This, in my opinion, is perfectly balanced. And the, uh, the additional flavors that 
the onions and bell peppers imparted into the meat. It was incredible. You know, cheesesteak doesn't have to be a a fancy dish. I mean, it's just uh, it tastes good. Yeah, I've been to Philly. I went to Pat's and then I went to Gino's right next door. Now their preparation there is completely different. They're delicious. Um, I, you know, I don't want to say mine are better, but <laughs> they're really good. They are really good. But man, this this is just wow. I'm gonna have to get another YouTube short. YouTube shorts are the short form videos I'm doing a lot of because I really want to capture the the experience here. Don't want to melt my phone. Oh man, dude, these are gonna be oh. Mmm. Just waiting on that cheese to melt. All I'm doing. It looks like it is melted. Oh yeah, gooey, 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 yes. <laughs> oh man. I'm gonna give that one to my wife. Go get her plate. Okay, so that's how I cooked a cheesesteak on the Blackstone. Subscribe, comment below, and be sure to expand this video's description and click the link there to find all the tools that I use. Thanks for your viewership, and y'all have a good day. Hey y'all, I, Rick Sky here. I hope you enjoyed this video, and please be sure to subscribe to my channel, and when you do, ring that bell icon to be notified whenever I post another video. Thanks for your viewership, and y'all have a good day.